Greetings everyone. It's time for a video. Uh, this is kind of a tool comments slash, I guess it's sort of an unboxing, not really though. Uh, it's not a tool haul, um, though some might think it is. Anyway, um, so um, this is something I picked up. I've actually had this for a while and I just haven't really had a chance to do a video about it. And um, as odd as it'll sound, I haven't really had a chance to use what's in here much. Um, this is something that I really didn't have expectation to buy, but I saw a good deal from an international seller. So I saved up my pennies and I picked it up. Um, and this is a pricey item. Well, by some standards, um, you know, this isn't Harbor Freight Sheet by any stretch. There's not even a remote comparison between something like that and this. So, uh, what is this? Well, the part number, first off, it's from Hotsit. Uh, the part number is 600 SPC slash 16. In the case of Hotsit, 600 is kind of what it is, and if you know Hotsit's num part numbers, you'll get a rough idea of which tool that is. Uh, SPC is the, um, is in this case, stands for special. Uh, and then the last thing is the slash 16, as with Hotsit, they do this for pretty much most of their tools. If you see like a slash and a number, that's how many parts are actually in it. So this is going to have 16 parts. So just some brief comments. I've seen other people say this about Hotsit's packaging. They kind of have an old school style to them, uh, to some of their boxes. And I have to agree that you know, there are people say it looks pretty neat and they like the kind of the aesthetic and I agree it's kind of nice you, know, you got your little blue and then you got your darker blue and yellow that they've had forever you know it's a cardboard box now this is how this came which is kind of an odd package had some tape uh, and then it came from a, I got it from a UK seller for a pretty substantial discount I don't know that it was clearance but it was less than what you would pay for it in say America from a German um, tool sellers, there's a number of them, uh, or if you can find it on eBay, same kind of thing. And this is new, this isn't used. So anyway, without further ado, let's open it up. So what is this? Well, when you open it up, you get this nice box inside, and then you see this wonderful, I'd say wax paper, but it's kind of more, um, it's kind of the corrosion protecting, and also it's supposed to be you know, prevent things from moving around. So without further ado, what are they? It's wrenches. Oh wow, lots of wrenches. Um, in this case, these are the Hotsit uh, 600N series, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pull them all out. Um, and uh, they uh, have some interesting features. Uh, Hotsit is of course a well-known German tool maker that uh, is very expensive. I've heard the, uh, some other people, uh, I think, um, like the Lone Star Mopars guy, and then others say that the prices on their tools are snap-on equivalent and sometimes higher. And I, given what I've seen, yeah, I'd have to agree with that. They are very pricey. So this is all of them. And like I said, 16 pieces. And, you know, this is interesting packaging. Maybe not the best. It was torn a bit, which... Uh, but that's how they were sent and you no know, basic no frills no storage uh, which some people might think is a minus or a plus like you know like say if you compare it to say Slaw Villa where you'll get a pouch or of course the, the well-known Vera pouches then you'll see you know uh, some discussion about that uh, that Maybe some people might want more. I don't know. It's hard to say. I, in this case, I'm not really that too worried about it. So, this set is, uh, as I said before, it's 600 SPC 16. And um, it's kind of interesting because I don't really have these in order in terms of size. It's interesting because uh, you can't actually see this in the catalog. At least I haven't. Uh, not the one that, uh, you know, they have the American version that you download from PDF online. So it ranges from seven millimeters up to 24. It doesn't really skip much except it skips 20 and or 20 and 23. And I'm guessing those are just sizes that aren't used. In fact, I don't know, you know, I, I mostly only work on Honda's 
my Hondas and then I've done some other stuff for others but uh, those they yeah 20 and 23 just are odd sizes they don't you know 23 is a millimeter less than 24 obviously and 24 and a half millimeters is an inch so it's kind of I don't know that there's gonna be anything really close to it unless you're getting the like I don't know 29 30 seconds or something if you want to compare it to say Imperial but um, you know it, it's it's cut kind of, it's odd sizes and they don't include them and I don't mind that I mean some people might and I've seen that um, complaint about other sets from uh, for other tools but I've not seen anything from my experience that's caused me to miss having those stuff so here they are all laid out I uh, got the 24 which is quite large um, and all the way down to the 7 which is quite tiny now there are some things about these things so um, hot it like all other wrench makers or tool manufacturers they have you know features that are really nice about their wrenches compared to others um, one of the things they talk about is what they call their dub their uh, traction profile or TP and basically uh, that's what's going to be in here in the box end and then of course you got your open end um, We're going to talk about more about some of the finish and all that. So what does that actually mean? Uh, well, it's something like this So to show you on my scribble here This is supposed to kind of represent like a regular standard wrench like uh, you know, like you might see your old style craftsman or whatnot and then traction profile and it's kind of drawn oddly they they kind of round off and I did a, a six point but the 12 point is the same kind of concept uh, it's kind of more like there's like a hump on each flat so instead of it being flat with sharp corners there's kind of like a hump and the corners are kind of actually dug in a, and this is similar to um, uh, snap-on's well-known flank drive and in fact since the patent that flat that snap-on had is is Law has expired on their flank drive. Other manufacturers have been doing this. You know, like Stahl Villa has, uh, they call it their AS drive, and then uh, Ghidorah calls it unit drive, like UD. Uh, and yet if you see their tools, you're, you'll see those things. Um, you know, it's the same basic concept of just having this kind of rounded off thing. Now, uh, Capri has a different thing, but it's a similar concept. They call it their double wave profile. Uh, I'll put links in the description all the and to all these different pages because they're they have it on their site they talk about it in their catalog um, I one the overarching comment I've seen about this stuff is some people might say hey this sounds like a marketing gimmick but in practice what everyone who has it has said is like no it's not a gimmick it actually works uh, it wasn't with snap on when they had it and it's not when all these other companies have something similar whether it's you know the traction profile here for hot set or as drive for stall villa and so on uh, then the basic idea is because you've got these rounded um, things uh, these rounded spots the force applied to the nut is more towards the side and less on the point uh, like if this would be a nut the force is applied more on here let me get a pointing apparatus um, it's more here versus like here more on the point so what happens is is it, it prevents it helps it helps reduce the chance of um, the wrench rounding over the nut so that's kind of the point behind it um, and like I said a second ago everything I've read and comments from people who have used this you know, especially professional mechanics have said no it does work there is a difference um, it, it does indeed it's a valuable feature. So now that we've talked about that. Um, the other thing, of course, you know, like the shape of wrenches. So, you know, if you want to compare to say, uh, and I'll, I'm going to compare these to um, some uh, some Craftsman, U.S. made, old, slightly older, and then some Stavilla, uh, just to give some some ideas about how these are the same and yet different than some of these other manufacturers. So. The other thing they talk about is, you know, they say these are this is a uh, <coughs> this is the 600 N series wrenches, um, and they have others. They have a 600 LG, which are like called the 600 long, and they're supposedly extra long. Uh, these are also listed as slim and long in their marketing material. So, you know, they're they're they have uh, 
in terms of construction and whatnot, and let me zoom in a bit here. Um, so the finish is, you know, as I would expect, it's the matte finish that pretty much all of the German tool manufacturers, you know, they have. And they advertise it, they talk about it. Um, in the case of uh, Hot Setting Ghidorah and Stahl Villa, um, they list benefits for this. And, you know, some people like this versus the more American style, uh, shinier finishes, right? Now they list it as non glare, and then there's a, um, not, it helps that it doesn't, your, your, you, your hands won't slip as much. And then the last thing is they list it as anti corrosion, though I want to kind of question just having a chrome finish is probably going to be anti corrosion. I'm not sure that the matte is going to help with that, but that's what their marketing material says. Um, now, as you can tell, of course, uh, you know, pretty high quality. Let's see if I can get the light in here pretty good. You know, everything's high quality. You've got, of course, the, the size, and then you've got chrome. They dropped the E compared to us. Hot's it. 600N, which is the series, and vanadium. And then they got the 19 here. You flip it over, you see the same thing, which is pretty cool. Uh, in terms of, you know, it's got the angle. I think it's 15 degrees, maybe 13. I could be wrong on that. And then, of course, the other thing at the head, there's nothing really special about it. It's pretty straightforward. The only one thing, of course, they talk about is they polish uh, the face of the uh, open end, which is kind of interesting, but not in the inside. Um, apart from that, you know, it's pretty good quality. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to dig out a scale here in a bit, and when I pull these others in, uh, we'll, we'll, I'm going to pick three sizes, and then we're going to do some comparison between uh, these and some others, because um, there's a couple of things that stand out. The other thing they, of course, they talk about is, uh, Hots it does, is they have what they call their double T profile. Now, the German makers all seem to kind of do this. They have, they focus on trying to make their wrenches a little thinner in the hand. So in the case of Hots it, uh, they call it double T, but it's the same thing as what Stahlville and Ghidorah have. Though Ghidorah doesn't call it out, but their profile is the same. And basically this channel here in the middle represents it's kind of like an eye, and I'll draw. Up, I'll pull a picture out in a minute. Uh, I'll pause, and I'll do that in a second. But uh, it's a way of reducing the weight, and the the thought is, and it's very obvious when you look at it from Stahlvilla, who kind of takes this to an extreme, um, that the force on a wrench, like when you're doing a, a a bolt or a nut, you're turning. Well, the force is uh, parallel to um, or is across the, the thickness of the width of the wrench, right? So like the force isn't like this, right? It's not up and down, it's this way. So it makes sense as you want it thicker, but you don't need it thinner because if you're not bending this way or this way, you know, up or down perpendicular to the, uh, the face of it, you're, you're, you don't need it to be as strong in that direction. So there, there's a logic to it. And there's another reason for it, which is simply that if it's thinner, it's going to weigh less. And some people might not like that. Uh, some people kind of have complained about these thinner wrenches that they, they may bother your hand a bit. Um, in practice, I haven't seen that. I like kind of like the thinner wrench. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, let's see. Other things to think about with this. Um, the uh, of course they have nice rounded edges which is it's pretty it feels good in the hand one thing i will say that about this finish is sure it's matte chrome and sure it's smooth but there's also i guess the best way i can describe it is if you take if in the in this is a feel in a like a hand that's bare like mine it's just bare skin if i'm holding this uh there's a feel of it that if you took like say a piece of 2000 grit sandpaper that had been used um, and but still had some bite left that this is kind of how this feels maybe not quite as rough as that but it's certainly got kind of a, a sandy feel and it's certainly more noticeable compared to others and I'll bring in a couple others in a minute here when we talk about that um, apart from that everything else is pretty standard as you would expect from a wrench I mean they're wrenches it's what it is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause, I'm going to pull out three sizes that I'm going to compare to, and I'll be back in a moment. One thing before I go any further, uh, I want to talk about the quality control real quick. Um, you know, this is a pretty decent sample size of wrenches. Um, you know, you got 16, so you can kind of look and see about, you know, how well are these compared to each other. 
in terms of, you know, do you see defects or anything else? And, and there is one, uh, but I'm not really going to get bent out of shape about it, but I'm going to point it out. There's a, I don't know if it's kind of a ding or a chip, hard to say. Let me, let me uh, pull up and try to focus a bit so you can see it. Hopefully you can see that, but right there is a divot and it's just in the chrome. I don't know if it's it's something that happened during transport or it was already there before now. It's not a big deal to me. I mean, these are special and, and whatnot, so uh, things happen. Not going to worry about it. Um, some people might not. Might think that's a big deal. I can't really say. I don't expect perfection, but I do expect them to be in pretty good shape, and for the most part they are. I mean, I, you know, the polishing on this, on the heads are pretty, on the the faces of the open ends are pretty good. I've seen a couple where there is more like scratches, but I think that's more a fact of them being transported, which might need some improvement. Uh, but I don't know. It's I can't really say. You know, this is kind of the only thing I have. So that's the only thing I've really noticed. I've seen maybe a little bit of indication that some of them aren't completely straight, like there's a slight curve. But it's hard to say. It just also just could be how the light hits um, the edge and makes it, you know, it's, like, it's an optical illusion. It's not something that's really there. So anyway, just something I'd call out. Um, but apart from that, you know, mostly the fit and finish is really good and nice. I have noticed one other thing is that, uh, you know, I mentioned before how they feel like, for example, right now, like these two wrenches, this is a 19 and this is a 15. Um, this one, and partly I know it has more surface area in my hand, but uh, the um, 19 has kind of, uh, it's kind of has more of that sandpapery feel that the uh, 15 kind of has a little bit less of. And like the 10 even has less than that. But, uh, you know, one, another way to describe how it feels, and some people may be turned off by this, I don't know. A way to think about it is it's like I touch it, and it feels like my hand is dirty. Now it's not, right? But that's kind of the sensation you get. Um, or at least that's the sensation I get. Other people may have a complete different mindset on that. So, you know, I talked about this, what Hotze calls the double T profile. Um, Stavilla calls it the H beam. And, you know, they all have their little groove. So to give you a rough idea, uh, you know, you have kind of an H-beam, or if you're used to it in construction, they also call it an I-beam. It is a very uh, strong uh, engineering form in terms of uh, how it is. So, like, if, you put, if you're putting force, you know, this way and this way, what you got to imagine your wrench is going to be like this, uh, that force is it's going to be resisted very well in that direction and in a wrench you're not usually going to be doing forces you know perpendicular to the main form so it's going to end up being pretty strong and like i said this is where they can take it and lighten it up now the lightness again some people may not like it you know like let's take this craftsman for example it's uh heavier it's got a big fat fill in the hand some people might like that uh but you know your mileage may vary uh, in terms of like the stall villa uh, and and this is the 13 series by the way this is not the 14 and that's I'll bring that up again in a second um, you know it's it's lighter it's got that same kind of uh, you know it's they call it sometimes a thumb groove but the the gist of it is is they're partly removing metal to make it lighter and thinner um, which if you're using this all day long is it, it's actually probably pretty handy plus it kind of saves some metal uh, which could drive manufacturing costs down and you would wonder if they would pass it on to the customer, but probably not. But I'm not going to criticize because there is an actual practical purpose for it. So let's start comparing here. Um, let's take these 19s. These are all 19s. Uh, of course, these are the Hotsits. And then you got the Craftsman. And then you got um, the Stahl Villa. And the immediate thing, of course, you notice is uh, the Stahl Villa, and this is their 13, which is considered their standard wrench. Uh, the open box 13 this is their it's pretty short this is an older style craftsman made in usa um and uh it's longer and then of course you have the stall villa which is very long it's uh yeah, let's see in this case we're talking imperial measurements 
it's going to be roughly an inch longer than the Craftsman and then compared to the Stahl Villa uh, inch and a half maybe so definite length now there's a plus to this and there's a minus to this being longer the plus is longer means more leverage means it's easier to use all right that's plus the, the downside is <clears throat> if you're trying to get in kind of a, a confined space uh, the shorter is kind of an advantage because you don't have to worry about hitting something as you're you're moving uh, you know you're trying to loosen or tighten a nut or a bolt uh, conversely though uh, the shorter might be a problem like if you're trying to reach into a small area and get to something uh, the longer is uh, a benefit in that regard too because the leverage as well as being able to reach in further easier your hand will have more clearance so um, there's certainly positives for both uh, in terms of how they you know do it um, now let's say other comparisons um, as I said before the uh, Hots, it's clearly longer. Uh, in terms of the box side, uh, I would say the Craftsman is definitely thicker. Um, I can feel it in my hand, and if you look, let's see if I can get you in there. It's going to be hard to see, but this is where the Craftsman is, and the Hots, it clearly fits inside the profile. So uh, you can tell it's it's definitely smaller in the box area in terms of size. It's also clearly smaller. In terms of the handle itself, if I lay uh, the hot on top of the Craftsman, uh, let's see this area here, uh, which is kind of hard to see this way, but that is all uh, the overlay of uh, how the Craftsman handle is bigger. Um, the head is actually honestly not that different. The head to me is very similar. I mean, it quickly when you get past the open part it it ends up being where you know then you're into this is slim and then of course you want to look at it from the cross section um, you can see that this is significantly thinner and you know then you bring in the Stavilla all right well it's even thinner than the Hotset and uh, of course there's the other things that um, oh there's one other thing to point out too which is kind of interesting is that the Craftsman is uh, the box part is thinner in terms of height, right? So the width is it's bigger, but it's thinner here, which is kind of interesting. Now both the Stavilla and the hot set are the same size in that regard. So I don't really see a practical difference here on the open box side. Now where things get interesting is um, Stavilla has a feature that they. Uh, talk about they've refined their wrench and you can see it here like if I line this up straight you can kind of see there's kind of this offset um, and Stalvella also does one other thing there in this what they talk about their cross section is it's wider and let's see if I can align it up some where it is there's along here and then along here there's kind of more um, the sawbill is bigger. So, you know, they talk about this again. This gets into that whole thing with cross section of, of what I was talking about with I beam and where the force is. Uh, it's the same kind of thing here where there's more force in these spots. At least that's what they say in their catalog, and they say that, and that's why it's bigger. So, that's how the Hotsit compares the other two. Um, there's one other thing. Let's see. In terms of uh, marking, Oh, hot sets kind of cool because they have the 19s here and here uh, visible from both same direction which is nice uh, craftsman they have to flip it and do it the other way so you can read the 19 but they do have the 19 on the end uh, they do have it here but they don't on this end which is kind of a difference um, stall villa uh, I, I do kind of have to knock them a bit they have the 19 here honestly they have some visibility issues in their other stuff and there's another review i'm going to do of something else i got from them which will show the same problem uh, they have the other 19 here so gotta give props to the hot set for that there's that visibility is pretty good it's it's easy to see uh, which is important honestly and the craftsman honestly I will say even though uh, it's not the best uh, it's it's not bad either so um, 
other things to compare you know like I said this has got kind of that um, if you want to compare it to say these two in terms of the finish you know I've talked about kind of the sandpapery feel uh, the Stavella in my hand is just unbelievably smooth and which is part of the reason why I like these wrenches is it has a nice smooth feel I'm not saying I hate this and in practice I might end up finding out I like this better I, I need to use these a bunch and the Craftsman is kind of it's kind of in between uh, it's certainly not as smooth as this but it doesn't have that kind of sandpapery feel that the hots it has um, so that's just kind of the where it is and then you know you of course you can compare the finishes um, you know how it has their bright chrome matte finish uh, these uh, craftsman it's matte but it's nowhere near the matte of either of the German tools honestly um, and I will say that I do think you know, I know some people might think it's a marketing gimmick, but just kind of like people might think the Snap-on was kind of mark, flank drive is kind of a marketing gimmick, but it's not. It does work. I do actually think there's something to the the mat, and other than the aesthetic part of whether you prefer it or not, just do you like this or do you like, you know, it's like, do you like the color red or do you like the color blue better? Um, I have to say I do like this as from just preference, but I do think there is something to the glare because I've been I've been a few times where I've been working. Uh, like I, I think I did a valve cover gasket change on a van and I had uh, light and uh, I had a I don't know what I was using but something it was shiny and it had a shiny chrome finish that you you know you see in other tool manufacturers and yeah it was it just kind of blasts you in the face um, you know the light just happened to reflect off just right and you get in the eyes and you're trying to look down there where you're trying to work you know and then all of a sudden you're just getting blasted by this light and it's not like oh god like I'm looking at the Sun that's not what it is it's um, but it is distracting and sometimes you kind of gotta well it's not it doesn't help when you're trying to see what you're uh, when you're trying to see what you're doing uh, you know whatever your work area is and whatever you're working on so I do think there is a, a regardless of anything else I think the the mat just for the glare uh, reduction alone, I do think there's something to it. So, um, so these are the 19s. Um, you know, that's how they are in terms of comparison. Uh, if you, there's not really any practical difference between, you know, the others, the 15s. Um, again, you're going to see the same basic pattern in terms of, uh, you know, length and size and style, um, and then. Finally, you'll see the tens, you know, the ones that everybody seems to lose. Uh, same kind of thing, same kind of length pattern, same kind of markings. Uh, you know, nothing really different in terms of how they are. Um, there is one interesting thing, too, about uh, how, if you notice, these wrenches kind of lie flat on the bench a little different than between them. So, like, the it's maybe hard to see, but... The Craftsman kind of dips down and comes up. The Hots, it's like propped up, and then the Stahlville is a little different. So, what that has to do with is kind of where it's not really an angle thing because these roughly all have pretty much the similar angles. If you look at them, uh, it's it's where the angle starts. So, in the case of the Craftsman, it actually starts further down. Uh, in the case of Hots, it it's right on the end of the box, and Stahlville. It's also right on the inbox, but it kind of takes a moment to do it. So it's just kind of a, I guess, just a little difference on how uh, they make these wrenches. There's just a tiny bit of difference between them. So you'll see, I don't, I don't know, practically speaking, when it makes that much of a difference as you use them, but that is just something to note that, you know, that's how these wrenches are. So um, I'm trying to think what else I want to cover here because there isn't much else really to say about them. Um, oh, I'm going to weigh them. So hang on a second. Let me get my uh, scale. All right, I got a scale here. Uh, let's take a 15. So we're going to take the 15 and weigh it. I'm going to do it in grams. And we end up with 111 grams, roughly. All right, we compare it to a Craftsman. Craftsman is 129 grams. Now, 0.7. All right, and then if we compare to the Stahl Villa, 75.4. All right, so right there, you can already uh, get a rough idea 
about the difference in the weight. Um, this Craftsman is significantly heavier than either of these. And, you know, like if you want to compare like even size wise, I mean, you can see you get more reach. Uh, it's thinner in the hand. And yet this thing weighs, I don't know, roughly 10% more, maybe. Yeah, probably about 10% more. Um, that's a plus, honestly, if you ask me. If you're using this all day long and having to pick this up, well, that makes a difference. And then if you compare this to this, I mean, this, there is no comparison, honestly. This is closing in on roughly 40% um, lighter and, you know, probably as strong, if not stronger, in the areas that it matters. Now, there is, of course, the length difference and it does make a difference, but you know the flip side is, uh, you know, honestly, the probably the better comparison is between these two, really, um, versus the Craftsman because uh, this is a short wrench, this is a long wrench. Now, I don't, I don't even that I don't think is really a fair comparison. You know, uh, Hotsit represents this as being a long design. Now, it's not their long design, their LG, the 600 LG, which is basically this, but they only make six of them. And those things they advertise being 20% longer even than regular wrenches. So, uh, but if you compare um, uh, Saw Villa's, what they call their 14 series open box, which they call their long series, it's the same length as these. Uh, they're, in fact, I think the Saw Villa 14 is actually a little bit longer. Or Stahl, the, the 19 millimeter of the, the Saw Villa 14 is longer than this Hots at 19600N. So it's kind of varies. And then the other thing is um, Hotset also sells another. It's the 603, which is slightly different profile. It's uh, kind of, a, they call it their all round wrench. It's, it's actually roughly the same length as the 13s for the Stavella, but it's kind of more of an offset versus say just the standard you know angle that you normally get out of these. So, so that's the weights for those. Let's go ahead and do real quick uh, these others. Uh, let's do the 19. So this is the 19 for the hot set. It's 201 grams roughly. Uh, the Craftsman is 224, so 23 grams more. And the Stahl Villa is 148. Pretty big jump drop. I mean, that's roughly, yeah. I mean, we're getting 50, 60, and compared to even the well, it's roughly 50 less than the hot set. And then it's uh, 60, 65, maybe 70 less than the Craftsman. So you can see how the, the weight thing is its kind of a big deal. And finally, to look at the tens, uh, 41.9 for the Hotzid, Craftsman 48.8, and then the Stahl Villa 34.5. So significantly lighter um, across the board. And again, that's kind of something where they advertise, but even you can see that the hot set, which is kind of beefier compared to say the Stahl Villa. And again, I'm not saying this is good or bad. You know, they, they test the stuff and they advertise it, but uh, there's a difference in terms of even the weight here between versus say a standard Craftsman, you know, from back in the day. So, um, I don't know if there's really much else to cover about them. Uh, they're, you know, my overall impression are they're, of course they're nice wrenches. Um, and I can't say that, you know, they're markedly better um, than, you know, what somebody else might use, but uh, they do have some definite differences, like these Craftsmen don't have the, um, they have the standard uh, drive, whatever you would call it, profile for, for, the, uh, <laughs> for the teeth. They have the same um, standard profile, so they're more likely to round off versus say the Stahl Villa and the Hotsits, which are, you know, they have their AS drive or the, uh, the double T, the traction profile, sorry. Um, so in that regard, you know, these are pretty decent, I think, in terms of the features. Uh, the only others I saw that might be, you know, probably more, uh, maybe more advanced. I, and I say that, that maybe not the right word, but certainly seem to be pushing some innovation would be the Capri wrenches, which have their um, their double weight profile and then the, the open end 
you know, these are all pretty much in terms of the profile itself, are all pretty much the same. In, in the side, the jaw, they all have the rounded area, and then of course the two flats. While if you look at the Capri, they have you know a cutout for the um, the you know like the nut or the bolt profile, kind of like that. It's uh, to draw it. It's kind of like this. So if you can see that um, <laughs> my crappy drawing, but it's kind of like this. And the idea is that you know the the uh, nut fits in there, and it's got kind of a cutout for it. Um, but all in all. You know, my, my overall impression is is very favorable, of course. They're very nice, pretty well made. Uh, you know, some of the stuff is, is me just getting used to them because I've had them for a bit, and I, but I haven't really used them yet in any practical work. Um, while I've used my Stalvilla as a bunch, and I do like these wrenches a lot. Like I said, they feel good in the hand. Um, and they're light, which, you know, for me at least is, I'm not someone who does this all the time. Uh, and I don't do it very much, but for professionals, probably uh, may, it makes a big difference. But even so, I notice a difference. I mean, this this has got some weight, as is clear by the uh, the numbers from the scale. So anyway, uh, that's about all I really have to say about this. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, as always, I'm just going to keep moving forward. The quest is the quest, and uh, thanks for watching.